Hello, hello, my friends, how you doing? Hello, Kat here, I hope you're doing really well. In this video, I'm really happy you're here because I'm sharing with you how to create a winning quarter. Whatever a winning quarter means for you. I'm not sure what it means to you to win, but think about the success that you'd like to create in the next quarter. Uh, I'm going to be helping you reflect on the previous quarter uh, so that we can look back, grab the good lessons, all the wisdom, and take it into the next quarter. And look at what you want to take in and what you want to actually leave behind. So we are going into quarter three here. If you're watching this live, actually, if you're here live, I'd love it if you could uh, play along, you know, really answer these questions that I'm going to be asking you tonight and interact. I have created a worksheet for this, uh, which I'll get to you at the end. Um, but in the meantime, grab a pen and paper and I'd love you to write some of these things down, but also write them in the chat box so that we can make this an interactive session. That would be really awesome. Uh, I recently did a two day summit with my sister Vicky and we went through the winning quarter, which is what I'm going to run you through in this session. And it was so powerful. We both had so much energy afterwards I went for a run afterwards and I ran so fast it was incredible you know when you just get clarity and you celebrate and you think about all the good things and I felt like I hadn't accomplished heaps in the quarter and by the time we listed it out it was a full page uh, so we celebrated and we also looked at what are the things what are the projects for next quarter what went well what do I want to improve on and it was just so powerful to get clarity and when we reflect uh, on what we want, uh, on what, you know, what went well and what we want to change next time, what we want to create, it's, it's, it's like we go into this different realm, you know, we pull ourselves out from the weeds and the busy work and we go up into the clouds. And I'm not sure if you do this very often, but I know for me in quarter two, I was so heads down. I was just doing the, doing the, doing. It was the biggest quarter that I've ever had. It was really full on amazing loved it so awesome learned so much it was also hard um, but when I stopped into this activity that we're going to go through it really um, solidified everything for me and it was, it was really magic so I know for some of you quarter two has gone by in the blink of an eye um, for some of you it's it's been frustrating for some of you it's been amazing or somewhere in between um, wherever it's been for you um, I think it's really great to reset hit the reset button we're coming up this Friday new quarter and new um well, second half of the year also has, for me, it has a real, almost like a New Year's feeling. It's like, okay, second half of the year, what did I, what have I achieved so far? I like revisiting my New Year's goals, New Year's resolutions, and really just checking in. I'm not sure if you do this quarterly. I'd love to know, those of you who are on here live, how do you normally set your goals? Um, do you do them monthly, quarterly? Do you do them um, at the start of the year? In the Inner Circle community, we set our goals monthly. We do a 30-day focus and plan, plan a session every, at the start of every month. We also have the winning quarter where we do it as a group and uh, we create three different projects for the quarter. And so I would encourage you to think about three projects that you would like to do for the quarter. Um, in the monthly section, we, we break it down to usually just like one big project. But if you think of your, your quarter in three sections, and roughly one big project each month. So how do you normally set your goals? I'd love to know. Hey, Trish, great to have you here. Hey, Sarah. Hey, Cheryl. Hey, Karina. Hey, Sue Ann. Thanks, everybody who's here live. Thanks for putting the hashtag live. If you're watching the replay, pop the word, um, pop hashtag replay in the comments. I'd love to know what's resonating, what's sinking in, what you're enjoying and what's making sense. And I'd also love to know what your goals are for quarter three. So I'm going to talk you through the process. Um, I created a worksheet for this. If you want it, drop the word worksheet into the comments right now and I'll send that to you. Um, and it goes through like the whole process. It's really nice to take a bit of time and do this. I like to go to my favorite cafe and do this. I, I usually like to go out into nature and sit with my journal and just sit under a tree and reflect as well. And I also like doing it with other people because it's really nice having it as a conversation as well. So this could be something that you, you maybe take to a couple of girlfriends or take to your next meeting that you're um, part of and just suggest, hey, what are we doing? I did this recently. I was out on Saturday night. And I said to the girls, 
um, I'm doing something called Hardcore July. And so me and my sister Vicky decided that because I said, oh, these are my goals. I've been working so much. I want to get up off my laptop more. I want to stretch more. I want to run more. I want to do um, more physical things. And so we came up with this challenge called Hardcore July. And there's like all these different challenges. She knows I love a challenge and I love anything to do with winning, anything to do with beating my times and myself. So uh, I've been tracking um, like all of my reps and doing you know getting up throughout the day and doing reps and uh i think it's really important that you take the time and not rush past this because this is your life you know this is your life that you're planning and so i'd love to know why would it be important for you to stop and plan your next quarter why is it important to you i know those of you who are on here live i know a lot of you are goal setters and you already do this so why do you do it why is it important to you um, just pop it in the comments now why do you think it's important to plan your your goals and also have an action plan not just say hey this is what i want but have clear milestones clear action steps for it and why do you think it's cool to do it quarterly the reason I love doing it quarterly is because I tend to set really big goals and a lot of goals at the start of the year and then I get busy head down and I think quarterly is a good time to pop up and say okay am I on track or have I veered a little bit and often what happens with most of us is that we get focused on one area we do really well in it but sometimes we can neglect other areas like the work-life balance like Sue Ann here she helps women with work-life balance and so for me, I did that. I was so heavy on business uh, that there were some other areas in my life that I just didn't prioritize as much. So it's a good like meerkat pop up, have a look around, <laughs> reset. And um, it helps you feel more confident. It helps you feel more focused and you can bring the learnings, the wisdom from that quarter intentionally into your next quarter and you can decide what you want to leave behind. So the first thing is that if you're planning your business in quarters, um, that you break it down into projects. And I would recommend that you choose three big projects. For example, an online workshop is one project. Uh, it might be, I remember a lady last month, uh, last quarter, she was talking about one of her projects was a systems overhaul. And it was just cleaning everything up, plugging the gaps. If we don't stop and do repairs, on the pipeline of our business if we don't stop and fix things then the leakages just keep leaking and getting worse and so we need to stop at points throughout our our business journey regularly and consistently and plug those those holes so that could be a project for you uh, for you it might be that you want to get a new lead magnet out there or you want to start a Facebook group or you might want to grow your Facebook group by a certain amount of members. If you can put numbers on it, even better. Remember, we're deciding what you want. You don't necessarily have to have all the details of how. So I want you to dream in this session. Dream like if, if there were no limitations, if money, energy, time was not a limitation, what do I really want? And do your best not to go into logic mode here, but to tap into your heart. What would make you really excited, really passionate? The reason I started tracking all of um, my exercise again, instead of just kind of being a little bit mindless about it, is that I've tracked for so many years and I love it, but I'd just forgotten. I just got so swept up in life that I'd forgotten how it makes me feel to feel really in control and write things down. And so I would recommend that when you're deciding what you want, that you just go sky's the limit. This is what I want. And I'll figure out the how later. So this process, the winning quarter, is something I've developed over many years. And again, if you've just joined me, uh, pop the word worksheet if you want me to send it to you and I will get that out to you. Uh, and then it has all the questions. But I would love um, this to be an interactive session where you pop in the chat box. Um, thanks for sharing those in the chat box there. Hey, Cheryl, great to have you here. Um, we've got some really great reasons in the chat box as well. So the first question I have for you, and this is um, the very first section of the, the winning quarter is, 
the what's good snapshot. I call this the what's good snapshot where you really, you know, like the feedback sandwich where we start with what's good and we end with what's good and in the middle is like the not so fun part. So the what's good snapshot is what are your wins from last quarter? So I just want you to pop them in the, in the comments. What was a win for you for last quarter? When I did this with, with Vicky, I grabbed out my phone and I just went through my calendar and I was like, oh yeah, I launched, I launched squads um, in my inner circle community. Oh, I, uh, I got 11 new clients through a brand new program. Um, I attended this many workshops and events. I ran for, um, 13 Facebook lives. I did 13 group coaching sessions. Um, I did seven mentoring sessions with um, a business called She Mentors that I'm part of. I wrote down how much I earned. I wrote down that I hired a housekeeper. Uh, I wrote down that I did a new photo shoot. Um, there's just all these things that I kind of would have forgotten. So wins don't have to be massive. Um, I'd love you to just pop one of your wins in the chat box, um, something that you've, you've um, achieved in, in quarter two. Pop it in the chat box. I would love to hear. Let's celebrate each other's wins. The second question is, why are you proud of them? And I find this question just so powerful to answer. Why are you proud of those wins? The reason I was proud of a lot of those wins is because I've got some really great systems in place that are repeatable systems and this has been something that I've been wanting to do for a long time and so getting these solid repeatable systems felt so good I'm proud of those wins because I learned so much I'm proud of those wins because I also realized my threshold for one-on-one -on -one clients and decided to create a new group program um, which was super exciting um, I am so I'm proud of those wins because I knew that I did the best that I could with the time, the energy that I had. Uh, so why are you proud of those wins? Pop it in the chat box. I'd love to know why are you proud of those wins? This, the third question is, what are you confident about right now? Remember, in the human brain looks for what's wrong. That's what we're wired to do. So when we're reflecting, we often look to what we could have done better. Or when we're planning, we often look to, oh yeah, this, this was bad, this was bad, this was bad. That's what the brain does. So when we start with, what, what, what do I feel good about right now? What do I feel confident about right now? It helps us to get in this really good feeling. And when we're in a good feeling, that's when we're more likely to create amazing things. Would you agree? When you're feeling depressed, down on yourself, regretful, it's hard to be as creative and vibrant and um, like have that blue sky thinking. So what are you confident about right now? I'd love to know. What are you confident about now? And what are you enjoying? What are you enjoying in your business? For me, I really have been enjoying my inner circle group so much. The ladies in there are amazing. I know a lot of you are here and I just love it. It's such a beautiful community. I enjoy that so much. The time just flies and it doesn't feel at all like I'm working. What are you enjoying and what are you grateful for? What are you grateful for? So really good to just get that feel good snapshot before we move on to the next section, which I've called the growth reflection. The, the growth reflection lets you look at where you want to grow or where you have grown. So the growth reflection, I start with the question, what aspects of your business frustrated you last quarter? And when we can just list them all out, then we can go about changing them. And so just dump them out. What annoyed you? What made you just like, ah, what made you want to pull your hair out? And then what is not working or what feels out of alignment that you want to change alignment is so important that we feel that we're not off you, you know when you just feel like ah, it's just off and we know it and I think particularly as females we, we're just so wired to feel when something's not right and so to really put words to this to write it down to talk it out what is just not working I woke up the other day I, um, I heard this really cool um, quote. I can't remember who said it, so I can't reference them, but it basically said, 
don't go to sleep without asking a question from your subconscious mind. And so before I go to sleep, I ask myself a question and I often wake up with the answer. It's so cool. It's like your brain goes to work on it. Your unconscious mind goes to work on it. And I woke up with this feeling, question everything. And I don't get that feeling very often, but just question everything you're doing in your business. Sometimes we can just get so on the treadmill, you know? So I just sat down and I looked at all the different parts of my business. I was like, is it in alignment? Am I still enjoying it just because I've been doing it all this time? Is it what I want to keep doing? And the next question is, what difference will it make to your business to change it? What difference will it make to actually change it? Because this will require some courage to really look at some of the stuff and decide to make changes. And then the last question is, what have you learned? So if you've put the word worksheet, you'll get all this, so you don't have to write it all down. But I just want, want to invite you to start thinking about these questions. What have you learned? Uh, I go through a process called the reframe method and I take my clients through it. And for the sake of time, I won't, I won't go too deep into it, but I just want to invite you to think about if you go into the next quarter with all these frustrations and all these problems and things that feel out of alignment, why is that a problem? And I encourage people to, to say that or write that five times. Why is that a problem? Okay, and then why is that a problem? And you go deeper and deeper and deeper. And then you can actually reframe it. You can say, okay, so there's some things that I need to change, but there's also maybe some things that I just need to change my reaction to them. So we change the changeables, the things that we can change, and we accept the things we don't change. That's how we can keep flowing and have success and energy and all the inspiration, all the good stuff in our business is to work on the things we can change except the things we can't change. So I use a, a simple statement, even though situation, circumstance, like whatever you didn't achieve last quarter, whatever frustrated you last quarter, whatever happened, even though that happened, I choose. Uh, and this is just a really great ref reframe. So even though that happened, I choose. And then you write down what you chose. Uh, so, um let's go to the next one the next one is in order to feel that way in order to feel that frustration what must you be believing it's such a powerful question I use this all the time with, with uh coaching if someone's frustrated about something someone's got any type of emotion that they don't want I say okay well in order to feel that what must you be believing and so when I was getting coached on this, uh, I, I felt like, oh, in order to feel that pull, that annoyance, I must be believing that there's not enough time, that cramming too much into a short time frame is the best option. That getting things done and like as many things as I can in, in a short amount of time is, is a buzz. And so that was something that I really unpacked through the coaching session. And then the next question is, in order to feel whatever desired emotion you want, um, calm and control what must you believe instead and for me what I came up with was margins are good I'll be happier if I allow more margin so I tend to cram my calendar a little bit does anybody else do that <laughs> does anybody else have that kind of try to do so much in the time frame so I reframed it to I'll be happier if I allow more margins so I hope this is helpful, team. We've got one more section, which is the, the feel-good future. And this is where we start saying, okay, what do I want for the, the next quarter? What do I want? What do I want to focus on? And I would recommend that you have things that are clear focuses, but also like things that you want to focus on, on doing, like projects but also how many clients you want, how much money you want to make and write it down. Even if you don't know how, just write down how many clients you want and how much money do you want to make. The last question I want to leave you with is about meaning. And this is why is your work important? Who does it affect? Why does it matter? One of the business communities I'm in recently talked about the fact that we will not make money if we don't make our money matter 
And one of the reasons we don't set goals for our money or we don't make time for it or prioritize it is that it kind of doesn't matter if we make it or not. Meaning we have enough to be comfortable and have a great life. Um, so we don't really make our money matter. Meaning we're not motivated by money. So if this is the case, if you're not really motivated and driven by money, I recommend that you pick something bigger than yourself. There's a great quote that says, the why is in the who. Who would you help more if you had more money? Is it bigger? Is your money goal bigger than you and your family? Because it doesn't matter if you make more money or not, if you haven't made your money matter. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's not just about paying bills. You know, if it was just about helping people pay bills, I would rather go off and do something else. Everything we do in the Amplify Your Influence community is to help people win, help people be profitable so that you have more options, so that people around you have more options. Maybe you're doing fine and you're comfortable, but who do you have a friend you could that you want to help out? Do you want to make the world a better place somehow through politics, through sponsoring more children, through funding? Like, what is it that you would... Like, like pick a cause that matters to you uh, and then then that will make you push yourself to evolve and become that next level version of yourself so um the final thing i want to leave you i know i said final um but this is the very last thing is what are the three big um quarterly projects and when you decide on those projects, I recommend you break, you have a project planner and you probably do this already, but you have your milestones. So you, let's say you say create a masterclass, for example, you've got your milestone actions with the date next to them. And then under that, you've got your very next step action. A lot of times people don't achieve their goals is because they don't know the next step. And it just feels too big, too overwhelming. So big goal, milestones and then little action steps very next step in, in the community we call it what's your next best step and write that down so that you can get the ball rolling and get that momentum if you'd like to know how to have your best quarter yet if you would like to know how to get clients fast and consistently make the best money you've ever made and help the most people you've ever helped I am super excited to announce a new virtual VIP retreat that I'm running for my influencers community, uh, for my inner circle. And we have opened up spaces for 10 guests. So I haven't announced this on social media yet. This is the very first time I've announced it on social media. And I sent out an email and three people snapped up the spot straight away. So if you would like to join us, um, pop the word, uh, retreat into the comments right now basically I'm getting together the community for a two-day virtual retreat so this is designed for the members of my existing community my paid clients and we're opening up the doors to a few guests so if you want to see the best strategies that coaches and experts are using right now to grow their business it's only for female coaches and experts service-based business owners um, we'll be implementing the key elements of the client attraction roadmap which is what all my clients go through to help them grow their business make more money help more people and this is not just a learning event this is roll up our sleeves and get stuff done so if you'd like to join us uh, pop the word retreat into the comments or DM me the word retreat. The good thing about it is you leave with a done list, not a to-do list. I know we've all been to those events where you leave overwhelmed, you haven't taken any steps and you've just got a big to-do list of all the things you're doing wrong in your business. <laughs> um, I've been to many of those seminars. It's not like that. This is a, an action setting event. Um, so if that sounds like something of interest, um, come and check it out firsthand and see if you can start um, creating your plan for your most epic winning quarter. Um, so if you just caught this, the end of this, uh, and you haven't put the word worksheet, just write that in there and I'll get that to you. Uh, I'd love to know, what are your goals for quarter three? Pop it in the comments. What are your goals for quarter three? What did you get out of this? What was your favorite part of it? Um, really appreciate all of your comments and feedback. I read all of them. Uh, and thanks for tuning in. So until we meet again, my friends, keep shining, keep sharing your message to the world because it matters. It absolutely matters. So big love to you. Bye for now. See you soon.